What's up guys, in this video, I wanna show you what you need to do first and what you need to do last when simplifying rational expressions. Now, maybe you have a good teacher or maybe you have a horrible teacher that does not explain things thoroughly to you. So let me go ahead and help you out with that and tell you the first thing that I want you to do whenever you're trying to identify or add or subtract a rational expressions. What you wanna do is identify the LCD. Identify the denominator that they have in common, what we call the least common denominator. Now, the fastest, easiest way to identify a common denominator is to multiply your denominators, but that is not always going to be the case for every problem. That is why you always wanna to look to simplify your expression first. So in this example, I can't really do anything with x plus four but I do recognize with the x squared minus 16, that represents a difference of two squares. So I can go ahead and factor that down to an x minus four, x plus four. Okay, so now you can see I just kind of crossed it out because here's my new denominator, right? I made it. So now well, the reason why that's important is because this denominator is represented as a product, x plus four, x minus four. Over here, I already have the x plus four. I'm gonna put it in parentheses, right? Just so we can kind of keep things a little same. And you gotta say like, all right, I need to have a common denominator. Well, if this is x plus four, and this says x plus four times x minus four, then what is it I need to do to produce that common denominator? All I need to do is multiply this by an x minus four on the bottom as well as on the top. Now I'm gonna have my common denominator, which I'm gonna call x minus four, x plus four. So that's my LCD. We'll just go and write that down to remember it. And a lot of times if I was doing like on a piece of paper, that's something I'd write down first. Uh, that's something I'd write down. And again, just to remind me of like, that is my least common denominator. And again, a lot of times we can just rewrite that or keep that in the factored form. And in this video, that's gonna be extremely important at the answer, which we'll get to in just a second. So now there's really nothing else I need to do here. Now there is one little, little tip I wanna add into this problem. Notice how I added parentheses here. And the reason why I added parentheses is because you're adding an x minus four times an x plus four, right? If you don't use parentheses here and you just use a multiplication, it's just gonna look like this. Well, that is incorrect. That is saying x minus four times x and then randomly plus four, right? So this is not the same thing as this, okay? So make sure that you understand that distinction. That's why using parentheses is so important. So the other tip that's really helpful is when you're subtracting rational expressions, what I like to do is rewrite it as an addition problem. And because a lot of students just forget to uh, distribute this negative, you're not subtracting x you're subtracting an x plus a 36. That's really, really important to recognize here, right? Just like you're not multiplying by x, you're multiplying by an x plus four, right? Use those parentheses. So what I usually like to do is I like to just say, all right, I'm gonna take this to a positive negative, right? Because wouldn't you agree that five minus four is the same thing as five plus a negative four? Right, it's the same thing. So instead of writing a subtraction, I'm just gonna write this as plus a negative. All right, so now we have our common denominator. Now the one thing we do wanna do is go ahead and apply distributive property here. And again, notice how I have the negative with the parentheses, I can remember to apply distributive property over here. And then again, the nice thing is now that we have the least common denominator, I can just simplify everything down below. Okay, and now that I have everything, looks like we're gonna have a trinomial up top and looks like I can go ahead and combine these like terms, that's gonna give me a negative five X. Okay, so at this point, most students are just gonna be like, oh, I'm done, like, right, you combined them, you subtracted those fractions, you found the common denominator, and you're done. But again, remember what I said at the beginning of the video, I wanna show you something that you need to do first, as well as do last. And the first thing I told you to do was simplify, because if you can simplify, that can make finding your LCD very easy. Well, the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is simplify again. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a quadratic trinomial, and one thing I, I always tell students to do, whenever you see a quadratic trinomial, just try to factor it. Just try to factor it. Even if it's like not part of the problem or you don't think you're gonna use it, just look to see if it's factorable. I'm gonna do a quick mental check in my head. I'm gonna say, all right, what two numbers multiplied give me 36? There's quite a bit of them. Then multiplied give me a five. Now, obviously already I think 36, I think nine times five. And I know that nine times five, since my last term is negative, have a difference, right? I gotta find the difference between my factors. Well, nine and five, sorry, nine and four have a difference of five, right? So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for what two numbers multiplied give me 36, negative 36, and then add to give me negative five. So right now I can think about it, that's gonna be a negative, negative nine and a positive four. And uh-oh, voila, look what happens ladies and gentlemen. We can now go ahead and divide out our terms. So now we're gonna left with this final answer of x minus nine divided by x minus four, and we're still gonna have our um, excluded terms, right? Our values are excluded values, which are gonna be x cannot equal a plus or minus four, because that's gonna make your denominator equal to zero. Now, if you still feel like you need more help on finding the LCD of rational expressions, then go and check out the next video I have for you here.